Welcome to the Supplejack Metadata System. This is the technology that powers Digital New Zealand's harvesting and search services. Digital New Zealand was set up six years ago, and we harvest today digital content from over 150 different partners. The metadata that we harvest is wonderfully diverse, both in terms of the content that it describes and also in terms of its structure. But these, these differences, they present technical challenges to us. And Supplejack's the second generation of harvesting technology that we've built. It had three big aims. The first was that we needed it to be flexible enough to handle almost anything that we throw at it. The second was that we had to lower the barrier of use and make it so that it was, it was really easy to train people how to use this thing. And the third is that we wanted it to be browser-based. So this is Supplejack. This is the dashboard that you see when you log in. It gives um, some quick actions up here in the top right, stuff that you do all the time, like creating new contrib contributors or new sources of data or new parser scripts, which are the instructions that uh, tell the workers how to go out and harvest stuff. There are also uh, statistics on what's been happening on the production servers or on the staging servers lately. So you can see here that we've got 45 finished jobs and we can click through and see what those finished jobs are. And for any one of these, take a look and see uh, what the results of that job were with a little summary. Further down, we can see um, who's been editing parsers recently, who's been editing those instructions for the harvesters to go out and collect the data, and also the next 10 scheduled jobs. And again, we can go through and click to see the full job schedule and edit anything that's, um, that we'd like to change. But what I'm going to spend most of the time showing you today is how you can create a new parser script, how you can set up something for yourself to go out there and um, collect data. So I'm going to harvest from our own blog. So set up an, a, um, uh, a parser script, a set of instructions that teach Supplejack how to understand the data that comes in from the Digital New Zealand blog and how we can present that through the API. So I'll call it blog digital NZ screencast. Um, the data format will be RSS. Um, it also understands uh, JSON or OAI, um, custom XML, custom HTML, custom um, flat files, almost any structured data that you can think of. Um, we're not going to use a template. I prepared earlier the Digital New Zealand partner and I also gave it a source ID, which is a little ide identifier that's used internally to distinguish between different contributors and their collections. And now we'll create a parser script. So the parser script is the screen um, where you teach Supplejack how to interpret all of the different harvest sources. And each harvest source has its own parser script, its own set of instructions. There's lots of really handy little things that we can do here, but I'm going to keep it nice and basic for this video. We'll follow up in future videos with um, more advanced uh, um, functionalities. But what I'm going to do first is just show you how we can define a base URL. And for us, it's going to be the Digital New Zealand blog. Just copying and pasting. There we go. And if I hit the preview button, not much will happen, but it should, if I look on the source data, go to the Digital New Zealand blog RSS feed and split it up into individual items and then present them for us to see what's going on. Um, so again, we haven't had to taught Supplejack how to harvest any attributes yet, but we are getting the source data in with its messy HTML and everything in there. Don't worry, Supplejack will be able to handle that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up some default attributes. So Supplejack has a schema which you can define. Uh, this particular example here is going to use the Digital New Zealand schema, um, which has things like category and language and content partner. It's uh, based on an extended version of Dublin Core, but you could create your own schema. So these things here um, in the purple with the leading colon, those are fields in our schema. And now in the purple with the trailing colon are the ways that we should map it. So the category 
um, attribute is going to have a default value of websites. Now if we preview, we should see that everything's getting assigned the category websites. Not very exciting, but it's a good start. Following that, I'm going to do some copy and pasting here. We're going to add an attribute, which is language, and the language will be English. And another attribute, which will be um, content partner. And the content partner in this case is actually Digital New Zealand, because it's the Digital New Zealand blog. And finally, um, the primary collection which is one of our own fields that we use and that's going to be the digital NZ blog. So now if I preview the harvest all of those various attributes should be present in the harvested attributes. So category websites, language English, content partner digital New Zealand and the primary collection is the digital New Zealand blog. Well that's all well and good um, but what about the, the things that change from record to record? We can't assign a default value to those. But what we can do is, in this case, because RSS is a form of XML, we can make use of the XPath library. So instead of having a default mapping, we're going to use an XPath mapping. And the XPath mapping is going to be item slash title. Now if I preview, we should see the title of the article coming through. So question and answers with Donna Robinson. If I go one forward, question and answer with UC Seismic. If we look at the SOAS data, what we've done here is we've used XPath to specify that we want from item the title. Let's do the same thing with description and publication date. So again, I'll copy and paste. Oops. Oh, excuse my shoddy copy and paste skills. There we go. So description is going to be description. And if you remember the date in our schema is pub date. Now if I preview, we should have a description and also a date. Now you'll notice that the description is very long and it's kind of trailed off the back there. We can actually chain together um, additional uh, modifiers onto the back of a um, uh, on the back of a mapping. So let's truncate it to 80 characters. And let's also tell Supple Jack that this is a particular type of field. It's not just a standard string field, it's a date field. Now if we preview the record, you can see that um, Supple Jack is truncating the description with these three dots, and it's difficult to tell, um, but there's been a subtle change in the presentation of the date, but more importantly, behind the scenes, um, it has been stored as a date time object, so it's available for all sorts of um, interesting date searching or date indexing um, type operations. The final thing that we'll do is we'll also grab the URL. So in our schema, um, we actually call that the landing URL. And oops, there we go. And the X path for that is going to be um, from memory. It is slash item, let's see if I get it right, slash link. And if I preview, we're now pulling in the link to the resource. So I'm going to close this and I'll add a little message saying that it's um, uh, established initial fields. And I'm updating the parser. And what that means is it's actually going and um, both saving a version of the, of the script to uh, a database, and it's also actually pushing it to our Git repository. 
So all of your changes, so this is the initial state of things, um, and are versioned. Um, I've got to tidy up <laughs> the responsive design there. Um, and now if I go to the commit that I just made, you can see that all of the, the values are right back there. And I'll edit the current version. And it's nice because it means that you've got um, a history of changes, both that you've made and the other folk have made. So the last thing that I'm going to do is just show you how you can actually um, nest, uh, have, have more complex operators. So we're actually going to create a thing called an internal identifier. Um, and that's the, um, within Digital New Zealand, it's the internal thing that we use to differentiate um, one object from another. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a um, variable that we've already described, so the landing URL, and we're going to downcase it. And we'll end. And we could actually chain that together more and more um, commands, either using the harvesting uh, domain-specific language or using um, even Ruby itself. But this is just a very simple one. So we've, um, we're operating, and whatever comes out the other side of, um, of this function gets assigned to the eternal identifier. Um, and occasionally those functions can get quite long. And so there's our um, internal identifier. In this case, we didn't really need to downcase it, um, but we typically downcase things because occasionally uh, content partners might change the casing in the URL. And they think it's the same, but for us, we, we need to make sure that everything is um, uh, correctly individuated. So um, added internal identifier. Ooh, there we go. And I'll update the parser. And now we've got a new thing in our, in our history. The final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tag that as being ready for a staging harvest. Um, so now we've got a little S beside it. And I'm going to run that harvest and staging. Um, I'm going to run just 100 records. I'll start the harvest. And we can watch it tick through. 80 harvested, 100 records harvested. Took 7 seconds, 15 records per second. And within a few minutes, um, all of our solar search indexes will be updated and that data will be live. Um, not only through our own API and our own websites, but for anyone who consumes our API. And that's a little first taste of the Supplejack metadata harvesting system. Thank you very much.